Good evening. My name is Alfred Birch. I live at 3982 Livingstone Close. I'm a Saanich landowner with part of my property in the EDPA area. I'm also part of the new and growing Saanich Action for the Environment, or SAFE. I'd like to thank our Mayor and Council for hosting this second Town Hall meeting. This is not only an opportunity for people to express their concerns, but will hopefully be a step toward building a more positive, respectful, and constructive dialogue around protection of our environment in a fair and balanced manner. To begin, I would like to say that the main reason my wife and I purchased our home is because of its beautiful setting adjacent to a Saanich natural area and an ephemeral stream. Our property includes some buffer area for a Gary Oak stand on neighboring properties. It also includes a covenant on a beautiful mature maple tree um, and we're happy to abide by those controls and to do our part little by little in controlling invasive blackberries. We were happy to learn about the introduction of EDPA. We have no opportunity or desire to subdivide our property, and we value this added protection for the character of our neighborhood. Conversations regarding EDPA with our immediate neighbors have been mostly positive, although there is a need for more information. I believe we are like the great majority of the 2,200 Saanich landowners with EDPA property. We feel the program is a benefit, not a burden. We have no problem in seeking advice from Saanich staff about appropriate activities on our property. Second, I want to say that I spend a great deal of my time volunteering with one of our local land stewardship organizations. Organizations such as HAT, Peninsula Streams, the Land Conservancy, Greater Victoria Green Team, various park friends groups, and the CRD mobilize thousands of hours of volunteer time each year to control invasive species and carry out other restoration work around the CRD on both public and private land. Saanich's own Pulling Together program mobilized over 13,000 hours of volunteer time in 2015. Many of these groups also provide advice on gardening with native plants and other restoration activities, and they work with schools in hands-on environmental education. These groups are made up of people like me who care deeply about protecting the environment and would be greatly concerned if Sandwich backs away from its natural area protection programs. We're being, called, we're being called harmful eco-activists, but we believe that getting out and serving our community is better than name-calling. My third point has to do with land values. We all know that land values are rising in Saanich, in part because this is an attractive area in which to live. There has been some fear and misinformation created around the effect of EDPA on land values. I believe this is partly due to, uh, has to do with a small number of landowners who are seeking to increase their financial returns from subdivision. Please remember that EDPA does not stop subdiv subdivision, but it does place appropriate limits on the number and placement of subdivided lots. I realize that landowners have a right to protect the value of their properties. But must the rest of us suffer the loss of beauty and amenity values of our neighborhoods for the sake of thousands more dollars for some landowners and developers? I want to congratulate Sanich for undertaking a professional study of the economic impact of EDPA. I hope that those who say they are in favor of science-based policy will pay close attention to the results of that study. And finally, I would like to say that there's more involved here than fighting over saving or killing EDPA. I continue to hope that we can have a constructive dialogue regarding the future of the EDPA and the larger goals of building public support for environmental protection in Saanich. I have personally taken steps to meet and discuss the issues with the citizens for responsible EDPA. I think more dialogue is needed we need to listen honestly 
to the concerns of landowners as well as to the concerns of those who love our natural environment and want to protect it. Thank you, Alfred. Thank you. <clears throat> Could we please have uh, number seven up and number 12 on deck? Good evening. Uh, my name is Joan Hendrick. <laughs> I live at uh, 4328 Prospect Lake Road. And I'm here, I'll be very brief. I want to thank you for the opportunity to, to make a comment. I have sent letters to Mayor and Council also in support of the EDPA. Um, I really would like to echo what uh, Peter, I don't know Peter myself, but what Peter said and Eric, two previous speakers, I think they put it very eloquently, um, the concerns that we have, uh, the slow erosion of special places in Saanich. You have an opportunity to protect a bylaw that I think has probably been doing a very good job. There may well be an opportunity to make some minor changes to work with people who have concerns, but bottom line, I think you have a bylaw that is and can work very well, and I would support maintaining it and may, perhaps taking a closer look, but removing the bylaw, I don't think, is the answer, and I, I think you would find uh, a lot of people feel the same way. But I want to thank you for the chance, and I wish you luck in making your decision. Thank you, Jill. Uh, invite number eight, please, and number 13 down on deck, please. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Michael Maher, spelled M-E-A-G-H-E-R. I live at 666 Jones Terrace. And uh, hearing presentations so far reminded me that how lucky I was as a kid to be raised on the forest in the West Coogee, because I really appreciate nature, and it was not that it was any lack of nature, sometimes it was an excessive nature, but now we're in, in a quasi-urban area, and I appreciate the concerns people have whose land use can be constrained for the public good. And uh, that's the point I want to make is, I think there should be consideration of an amenity payment to landowners whose property, when properly inspected, not just, of course, using aerial photography, but the ground truth in the land, is constraining the, the owner's use and uh, secondly could there be and the, the inspection i think should also be done by the senate our, our taxpayers because they are taxpayers we are all and constraining their use and so on um, without proper ground choosing would be i think unwise and really improper so those two points are all i want to make although i certainly appreciate the intent behind the bylaw because as a member of the Gary Oak Meadow Preservation Society, I learned how incredibly complex that composition is and others uh, that are ancillary to it. So you would probably know you're sitting on a real biological sort of uh, 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 cage or, or treasury, and it's yours to manage on our behalf. So I appreciate your time, and, and I recommend you consider these kinds of suggestions. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I'd like to invite number nine, please, and number 14 to come down on deck. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of council. My name is Chris Phillips. I live at 4351 Gordon Head Road. If faith is defined as an unwavering belief in the absence of empirical evidence, then in March of 2012, council approved a faith-based bylaw. The EDPA bylaw as written and mapped is not scientifically defensible, was not ground truth, relied on old aerial mapping intended entirely for other purposes, is highly discriminatory, and was introduced with a total lack of transparency and respect for those affected property owners. It is in fact an affront to democratic principles to take such unilateral and clandestine actions against your taxpayer base. This is equally about our rights as it is about the environment. How then did staff, after coming up with this extremely lazy approach to environmentalism, able to convince council that, with no boots on the ground to substantiate the logic behind locking down and expropriating thousands of privately held properties, was actually a good idea? What science did they apply? Well, by their own admission, they took a boat ride and situated off the coast of Saanich could tell that all waterfront properties have sensitive ecosystems. Wow! 
That is seriously impressive. Even Darwin had to go on land. This was an accomplishment approaching a messianic feat. But even the good book tells you that if you want to walk on water, you have to get out of the boat. <laughs> this bylaw then is clearly driven by someone with a personal agenda, a sort of Machiavellian character with a total lack of empathy for those affected. Staff likes to quote that the silent majority are in favor without also pointing out that they're also the silent unaffected by the bylaw. Staff continues to accomplish their agenda by controlling who sits on and who chairs environmental committees. I would think then that these people are chosen not for their strengths but rather their weaknesses. How else could they convince an entire committee that expropriating property, installing unreasonable buffer zones, forced covenants in exchange for permits, and devaluing our most prized asset just wasn't quite enough. We need a noxious weed bylaw that also finds and penalizes only those already discriminated against in the EDPA. Sanich has made our own properties our enemy. With no incentives, who will replace dying trees or allow saplings to grow? This period may well go down in history as the first generation to not plant trees. A sad but true reality. It is very clear that this bylaw has met resistance. Yet staff continually tries to convince council that only 20 or so people are upset. And most of those don't quite understand what the bylaw is trying to accomplish. If divisiveness, loss of use and enjoyment, pride of ownership and precipitous loss of property value are what you had in mind, believe me, we get it. Staff's attempt to misdirect the public at open houses was blatantly obvious, and their failure to report the pending noxious weed bylaw disingenuous at best. It seems staff have become masters of logical fallacies that never quite tell the whole story, but nevertheless attempts to tap into the public's conscience by putting forward emotionally manipulative propaganda to try to convince us that their overreaching assertions actually have merit. This is how people lose their rights, a little at a time. The Sanich Citizens for Responsible EDPA, on the other hand, has been proactively seeking both sensible and viable solutions, ones that are environmentally friendly, rewarding, and does not impact property values. I urge Council to embrace the stride and prudent approach of voluntary environmental stewardship. Forced stewardship is a mindless ideology especially when it more closely resembles socialism than environmentalism and has no place in a democratic society and does not approach the undoubted efficacy of voluntary inputs and management. When we reside in a municipality that for years has been pouring raw sewage into our oceans and all but ignoring our areas of highest biodiversity, namely our parks, please don't preach environmentalism to me. You must lead by example. Taking my land through expropriation and forced covenants to protect a few trees while ignoring our parks is truly the definition of not seeing a forest for the trees. The public's loss of confidence in staff's ability to steer this program ironically means the only way forward is to go back and start over. This new process must involve private sector and recognized environmental groups. And to counsel, I ask, Chris. Do you have the strength, vision, and resolve to overturn an egregious administrative overreach that clearly has unintended consequences? And Chris, thank you. Your time is up. And I apologize. <laughs> I, realize, I realize a little late that Chris's uh, page was in front of the light. So uh, from now on, if I notice that you're not noticing the light and getting your one minute uh, time, I'll interject and just verbally let you know so that you can um, uh, know where you are in your time. Okay? Um, and just as a note, and as I said at the beginning of this process, remember that the feedback that you're giving and the input that you are sharing with council and, uh, is better heard when it is focused on the issue at hand and is not criticizing or accusing or blaming specific people. Okay, that is not the purpose here today. The purpose is to talk about the issue at hand and give the constructive feedback you have about what you would like to be seen, be done coming out of this review. So a reminder of what the purpose is here tonight.
Okay? Thank you. So we have... Oh, I, I'm just saying in your presentations, to keep them away from accusing and blaming specific people and keep them focused on the review of the EDPA. So we have uh, number 10, welcome. And if I could please get number 15 up here on deck. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Charmaine Phillips, 4351 Gordon Head Road. Thanks so much for this opportunity again. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Many may believe that we are here tonight because the EDPA bylaw is about us versus them. The tree huggers against the affected property owners environmentalists against non-environmentalists, but this I can assure you is not the case. I am not a pundit, I am a victim. The municipality's bylaw is highly discriminatory, selectively biased, and depending upon the percentage of your property impacted by the EDPA, it also negatively affects property values and its appeal to potential buyers. With this bylaw, Saanich has encroached on our property rights and placed their hands squarely on our wallets. For many, retirement plans have to be put on hold as their properties are no longer marketable. We purchased a property in 2011 and sold it in 2015 after three years on the market for $100,000 loss due to the EDPA. Our current property is blanketed by the EDPA, at least in terms of buildable area such that out of 65,000 square feet of land, we have approximately 4,000 square feet on which to build, and only because there is an existing home there. Were there no house on the site, there would be nowhere to build. Saanich Environmental Services took 62% of our waterfront, plus additional areas outside of the EDPA and outside of the buffer zone. Why? Because they can, according to staff who also advised that if we intend to have any rock gardens in the non-EDPA sections, to do it before they amend the EDPA bylaw and claim those areas as well. Then BC assessment increases our property value by nearly $500,000 over the past three years, claiming we have no loss in property value. But I will sell my property tonight to anyone in council or environmental services for $200,000 under the 2016 assessment. Any takers? Our application process to build our new home was met with passive aggressive overtones, constant delays, and ultimately ended in a forced covenant in exchange for a building permit. Bear in mind, we neither altered the land nor applied for a subdivision, yet we were forced into a covenant after Sanish denied us from being released from the EDPA under, for, under Section 14 of the bylaw that states with a biologist report that there is no significant biodiversity present on the property, you can be released. <laughs> Don't believe it, because it doesn't happen. This process took some three and a half years and over $70,000 in cost without so much as turning a shovel in the ground. Will Council please impart to staff the difference between uphold and hold up? <laughs> I also wonder how many members of Council and staff have properties in the EDPA and will they all volunteer to place their properties in the EDPA as it now stands? This bylaw was overthought and overreaching, which only serves to leave property owners underwhelmed and undervalued. We found out the hard way that EDPA stands for expropriation and devaluation of property assets. <laughs> the municipality must stop discriminating against a few and embrace a more holistic voluntary stewardship program for all, including Saanich itself. To exempt our parks from the same level of stewardship that you're forcing on private properties is truly like having a snooze button on a smoke alarm. Wake up, Sandwich. This bylaw may have had good intentions, but its implementation has produced unpalatable results. No one here objects to protecting the environment. Just make absolutely sure that there is something to protect and we're not locked down just because a map says so. Sandwich citizens for a responsible EDPA have worked tirelessly to find a solution. I too believe that voluntary stewardship, as proven in other jurisdictions, is the way forward. Many property owners 
who would have otherwise sought other avenues of, of action have instead placed their trust in this society and in the belief of voluntary stewardship. This is not us versus them. It's about proper science and property rights. Let's hope this time around council does what's proper and gets it right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Please. Hello, my name is Winona Pugh. I live at 5021 Prospect Lake Road. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to speak in support of the EDPA. I have lived in Saanich for over 25 years on property that is a very sensitive ecosystem, comprised of floodplain, lakeshore, and a stream. Theoretically, this property should be protected provincially through the streamside protection and enhancement area regulations. However, developments on nearby properties have challenged the preservation of this beautiful and natural area. Further protection is needed at the municipal level to support both provincial and federal regulations. I have experienced the impact of lack of protection of natural systems on my property. Ironically, the year the EDPA was approved, the wooded lot beside me was clear-cut, blasted, infilled, and a variance was needed to fit the house on the lot. Although the house still remains unfinished four years later, I now have a septic field draining across my driveway. I have stormwater running through the basement, and I also have pieces of broken glass and rubble eroding into my property constantly from the infill from that development. Often it's not the developer that suffers from the neighboring homes that are impacted but by all these damaging changes. It's the neighbors themselves. Attempting to manage these problems has been costly to both homeowners and to the municipality. The EDPA bylaw is a critical tool for landowners who do not have the knowledge and expertise to identify and preserve important areas on their property. It is also valuable as an internal communications document for planning, engineering, and environment to prevent errors in permitting, provide a sustainably based criteria for decision making, and to support the official community plan. Despite changes in my property, my hope is to remain in Saanich as a contributing member of our community. And trending real estate values are not a consideration for those of us who want to be long-term citizens in this municipality. As a pulling together volunteer, I appreciate the education that has been provided, the opportunity to give back to my community, and the recreation activity that restoration work in our parks provides. As mentioned, over 13,000 hours of natural areas restoration in 42 of our parks has been contributed just over 2015. This, we also know that the parks alone will not protect the ecosystems that are essential for a healthy community. This bylaw is not just about private property and profits, but about protecting the quality of the life that we value in Sandwich. The 2015 Vital Science Report shows that the natural environment is valued as the best thing about Greater Victoria, and we have almost half of the population selecting this as their top priority. In your 2015 message, uh, Mayor Atwell, you described the Saanich vision as Saanich is a sustainable community where our natural, healthy environment is recognized as paramount for ensuring social well-being and economic vibrancy for current and for future generations. Thank you for that statement. As property owners, we have a responsibility to maintain the health of our community, especially in preserving the environmental assets that remain and in working towards achieving our Saanich vision. Thank you so much for the time that you're putting into this. I so much appreciate your conscious contribution. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> I invite number 12 up, please, and number 17 down on deck, please. Your Worship, Member of the Council, my name is Richard Suen. My family and I live at 4835 Spring Road. We moved to Victoria six years ago. We bought the present house in August 2014. We were not informed of the new bylaws regarding EDPA. We only found out when we were notified the first open house last year. Our house is on five acres of land. There are quite a few oak, dairy oak trees on our property, so a large part of our land is under Etta. We love the Gary oak trees. We will certainly do our best to preserve them. We love nature, 
That's why we choose to live in a rural setting. We have no intention of subdividing. One of our concerns with the 10 meter buffer zone, our driveways, our retaining walls, our garden and parts of our house are within the buffer zone. They would need regular maintenance, repairs, and occasional upgrading. Should a damage occur, like from falling trees in a windstorm, a flash flood, flood or a fire, it would need to be repaired fast. From what I heard at the recent open houses and public hearings, we are not allowed to do anything. He must first apply to the city for permission. There are no stipulations in the bylaws to ensure that the applications be dealt with promptly and that no applications be unreasonably denied. So the application might be neglected or ignored and the approval could be very time consuming or denied. There is nothing much we can do about it. We are at the mercy of the city staff. What are we going to do in the meantime? If parts of our house is destroyed, where are we going to live? How are we going to protect our belongings? Oops, it's stuck together, sorry. My other concern is financial. After working long and hard for 40 years in the cold Prince George, we finally could retire in Victoria in relative comfort. The majority of our net worth is in our house and property. If the lending institutions become aware of the new bylaws and do not like the restrictions on our property, they may refuse to remortgage our house and call our loans. If we are forced to sell, how much has the value of our property depreciated because of the restricted use of our land? How are we going to sell our house with all these restrictions and uncertainties and, and, and watch this kind of price? The city staff at the first open house told us that the property value would not be affected by the bylaws. I find this hard, hard to accept. It simply defies logic and common sense. One cannot rely on past transaction records because only now is it becoming apparent to the purchasers, the realtors, and to the lending institutions of the financial implications of the bylaws. If I knew what I know now, I would have offered a much lower price for my house since I no longer have free use of almost half of my land. I applaud the City Council for trying to preserve the Gary Oak trees. We love these two trees too, perhaps more than you, because we choose to live among them. If after a thorough, unbiased, fact-based and properly commissioned independent study with input from stakeholders, the Council still finds it desirable to embark on a program preserving these trees, then let's all do it together. The burden, cost, and the financial ramifications should be borne by the City of Senate. It is simply not fair to ask those affected property owners to bear all the costs and the labor of the conservation program, while the City and the vast majority of its citizens do not have to do anything to conserve these trees and eliminate the invasive plants. Nowadays, everyone wants to be a conserva conservationist and so do I. It is easy to be a conservationist, and all Richard, one has to Richard, do. Richard, thank you. I'm sorry, you're out of time. Five minutes already? Yes. Oh, this is the best part. <laughs> <laughs> right in there. Thank you. I invite number 13 up, please, and uh, number 18 to come down on deck. And folks, I am going to start just interjecting when the amber light comes on so you get that there's a minute there. My name is Mary Haig Brown. My address is 237 Meadowbrook Road. And I'll say right up front that there's an EDPA on my property and I am delighted. I 
think it's an extremely important piece of legislation and it has been carefully worked out. So I'd hate to see, and I'm going to say it, please do not do anything to the EDPA. Think some revisions if you need, but do not remove it while you're doing the revisions. It's extremely important. Um, I did get a letter from some people who don't think the same way I do. Uh, they suggest voluntary land stewardship. I don't, I mean, if you're volunteering to do it on your own land, nothing's stopping you from doing it now. So I don't think we need to do a big uh, foo-for-all to get that going. It's, uh, we're all allowed to volunteer 